And now, ladies and gentlemen, from the MGM Grand Garden, here at the MGM Grand Hotel, Casino, and Theme Park of Las Vegas, Nevada, somebody's O must go. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, let's get ready to rumble! Well, rounds of boxing for the super middleweight championship of the world. Introducing first, fighting out of the blue corner, wearing the white trunks with gold trim, and weighing in at 168 pounds, this 1988 Olympic silver medalist has a professional record of 26 and 0, 23 by knockout victory. Tonight, he steps up from the middleweight division, where he has already captured a world title and puts his perfect record on the line. Ladies and gentlemen, from Pensacola, Florida, introducing the challenger and former middleweight champion of the world, Roy Jones And his opponent across the ring, fighting out of the red corner, wearing black and weighing in at 167 pounds. He brings his outstanding record into the ring tonight of 44 victories without a loss. He has scored 29 KOs and has two draws. And while compiling that record, he has captured two world titles. Ladies and gentlemen, from Ann Arbor, Michigan, presenting the two-time world champion and reigning super middleweight champion of the world, James. Spoke to both fighters in the dressing room. I'm cautioning you again. Obey my commands at all times. Shake hands. Good luck. Jim, when we get unbeaten champions meet like this, we often get a kind of creative friction that bursts out into the pure flame. That's what we're looking for tonight. One quick note, Gil and Larry. I was told late this afternoon by a source I trust from Roy Jones Jr.'s camp. And he hurt his right hand in sparring a month ago, has not hit the heavy bag with the right hand for more than a month, has not put a power shot at a sparring partner with the right hand for more than a month. So he comes into the ring tonight with the right hand, a mystery to him and those around him. Putting more and more emphasis on the left hook that does the most damage for him. He's been throwing triple left hooks in sparring to make up for the absence of the right hand. And he throws a right hand there, seemingly with conviction. And, and you, uh, you notice when the James Tony stalks an opponent, or when he jabs, he has a tendency to drop that right hand, which can be very, very dangerous against a good left hooker like uh, Roy Jones Jr. Here's that quick left hook, again, from an unorthodox angle. Tony has blocked all of those punches. Jones short with the right hand there. Tony looking confident, if a bit pensive so far. Willing to wait and see what Jones has got here at the outset. He's keeping his hands up and he's putting his putting pressure on Roy Jones. And again, you can see the quickness of Jones, that side-to-side -side movement. Jabbing and hooking with the left hand. Only a couple of right hand shots so far by Jones. Nothing has landed. Tony has been cautious and measured in his approach. Right hand misses for James. Want to get out. Want to get out. Double left hook by Jones. Right hand was a glancing blow. James Tony told us he would be able to counter because he didn't think that Jones would be able to resist taking the lead in the fight. 
up to this point Jones has been doing all of the leading there's a quick right hand by Jones and it looked okay there to James Tony watch the left hook just watch the left hook and when you catch it or duck it throw your own left hook good advice Gil absolutely if, if he could nail Jones if Jones misses that left hook doing an awful lot of damage and there's there's Tony trying to get off that big left hook it was blocked by Jones Tony looking like he wants to open up a little bit more in this round after an exceedingly cautious first A couple of body shots by Jones. One sounded like it landed on the cup for Jim. And again, uh, Tony carries that right hand across his chest. He's not protecting his chin. He got it up there, though. And Jones managed to thunder one left hook behind Tony's guard, but most of these punches being blocked on the gloves by James Tony. But again, if he throws seven and two get through, he's still scoring some points. Tony has to punch back. Tony hasn't found many openings. And there was the quickness of Jones again. He made Tony miss and nailed him with two of those unorthodox punches. They come from all angles. Right hand to the body by Jones. Finally, James Tony gets through with a left hook to the chest of Jones. That drove back into the corner. Good right hand lead by Jones. Again, Jones makes a lot of very tactical errors, but he has such fast reflexes that he can get away with making mistakes. Oh, don't hold him down. There's that quickness. Fast hands. Leaping with the left hook. Opened the glove as he threw the right hand to the body. Jones hurt the right hand against Bernard Hopkins a few fights Punch back. To get out. Don't hold him. Sneaking in the right hand after Jones had landed over the top. Break, step back, step back. Again, these two fighters, completely different styles. Tony is just trying to walk in, put a little pressure, physical and mental, on Jones and Jones. The left hook got behind the guard, Gil. Jones wobbled Tony just slightly with that left hook. I know that. You 
got a short knot shots up a little bit. Uh, when you can catch them when it comes in. Uh, especially when you twist them with the right hand, back with the left hook. Here's the flurry at the end of the round by Roy Jones. None of those was a clean punch, but they are scoring punches. They will count in his favor. His quickness is decisive through the first two rounds. On his head, let's go. Keep the control just like this. You're doing good. Keep it coming. Stop pulling, stop pulling. Let's go. Let's go, baby. Big disparity in punch output in rounds one and two. Would you tell James Tony to step up the act level, Gil? He's going to have to do something. He can't walk in and walk in without throwing punches. Low blows by Jones. Steele didn't say anything. And still the edge in quickness is decisive, as Larry put it. Quick, quickness and reflex, Jim. I mean, he makes Tony miss, and he's so quick countering. Get out the road. Get out. Showboating by Jones. The attempt fade, think. Left hook, and down goes Tony. You know, his seat never hit the hit the canvas. But they're going to call it a knockdown anyway. I agree, Larry. I don't think it was a knockdown. He wobbled back, but he did not go down. Reggie Johnson knocked him down in 1991. This, if it is officially scored as a knockdown, is the second time in Tony's career that he's been down. Crowd on its feet. Jones with plenty of time left in the third. Up to this point, it looks like an added weight that they put on... Uh, on uh, James Tony is a, an albatross around his neck because Tremendous he's very, man. very slow. Or maybe his Jones is just that fast. But he's uh, being completely outsped in this fight so far. Jones looks fast against everybody, but he certainly looked faster against Tony than some might have suspected. That was Tony's best punch of the fight. He caught Jones coming, and nothing happened. Right hand Tony. lead by Jones. Punch to get out. Unorthodoxy playing in his favor now. He's fighting with so much confidence, Jim. Right, step back, step back. Well, if he didn't use the right hand in sparring, he's using it here and so far fairly effectively, although most of the heavy metal has come from the left. Yes, but he has, he, again, he has thrown that right hand to set up the left hook. Sweeping left hook by Tony. Come on, punch it, get out of here. And more quickness inside from Roy Jones. Good defense there by Tony, who was able to duck and slip. Yeah, but it's okay to say no, 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 but they're still scoring points for Jones.